Dale nomás. Hello, tangueros and tangueras from all over the world. Welcome one more time to Patricia's and Eva's tango class. Today we keep going with the um, tango, the, the classic tango figures. And today we are going to work in the paradas and pasadas, which translate into stops and pass on or keep going. You know, so stops, stop, stop and go. Stop and go. <laughs> stop and go. Stop and go. And go. Now it's my turn to go. And go. Hello, beautiful. Hello. How are you? Very good, and you? Excellent. Happy that we meet again and we're going to dance and we're going to share tango. Mm-hmm. As every week. Yes. Yes. Very important class. This is a step that's going to stay forever with people. Okay. All of this series is like that. I mean, these are the yes. classics for a reason. Like yes. You will never stop doing it. It doesn't matter how advanced you are. You are going to keep this in your library of steps for sure. We go straight to the point. Let's go straight to the point. You take the follow to the cross, lead her into a front ocho, one front ocho, or a forward step across. You go back, slide your foot while you turn her into the front ocho, and you have your parada. Right there. Okay. Shall we do it? Lead the follow to the cross, unwind her, step back for one front ocho or a front cross, turn your partner, slide your foot, and you stop the motion. You brought the dance to a stop. This is a moment. This is a parada. Then the follow is led to step in front, pivot, accordingly square up with each other and then tango close this is one side of the parada we are going to obviously as what we always do share a lot of more information a lot of more things that you can do because we need to say this all of these things what what do we need to say all of this information we need to pass it okay. to them oh. so they have all these things you can watch the videos over and over because this lot that we are going to share with you so here we go i will okay <laughs> let's see yes <laughs> side step to the cross the follow crosses her feet the lead has to use his upper body i rotate my upper body turning my shoulders to the left Pulling my left arm back, which puts my partner at an angle from me. So then I can step back and she won't crash with me. And then as I turn my partner, I slide my foot in front of her. This is a moment of a pause. You have to make sure that the follow stop. Yeah. unlocks herself from this position because she could trip. There is a trip hazard right here. So you have to make sure that you Indicate to the follower that you want her to go forward, low your leg, make her step in front of you. Look, look at this beautiful triangle we made here. One of Eva's foot, her left foot, and my foot. This is a triangular position. Normally, in a triangle, all three feet are equally distanced. So that position brings a lot of good balance. When your triangle has two sides, two points, too close to each other, and the other far, that means it's uneven. So, but when the triangle has all three legs, all three uh, uh, feet balanced evenly, then it's a very harmonious triangle. Mm -hmm. And there is a good balance in a, in a triangular position like that. So I have a lot of information to share, so I will, I will go ahead and begin for the lead, OK? OK. So lead, pay attention, because I'm going to go through uh, a couple of the details, okay? So, you first, before you move to the side, it's always good to bend your knees a little bit, unlock your knees. I learned this from Juan Carlos Copes, my great master. Uh, he used to count this as a zero. Or he will say, and. One, two, he will say. I prepare and begin low. When you begin low, 
you are inviting to extend your legs in the walk. If the follow is pushed off from a position, she does not have so much time to react, so she goes on a split weight. If you bring your partner slightly down before you push, she has more time to see in anticipation and she has a more um, comfortable position to reach before she transfer her weight. And that is your friend because these movements are required that you can understand what happens before the weight transfer and what happens after the weight transfer. It's not simply where you put your feet, but how you put your feet. So take a moment to bend your knees, reach to the side, go to the cross at an angle. Look at my shoulders here at a light angle. So when I square up like this, my partner, who is at the cross at the moment, as I turn my shoulder, she will rotate a little bit. As, as she rotates, I step back, and now I, with my arm, I will cut her and turn her right away. Wait. Mm -hmm. Turn her in her axis, respecting her axis, of course. But you will not let her go too far, otherwise she might take two steps. And that will be outside of the axis. Side, forward, forward, cross for the follow. Unwind her, rotate her to face you a little bit. She walks right next to you, outside your hip, and you step back with a cross body. Now with this hand, you begin to rotate her and turn her with this part of the frame as well. Here, this hand. Then the follow proceeds to step. Turn, go, close. I think this is a good structure to begin. Mm -hmm. uh, of the details that I most, more I can think of is overuse your upper body. This position here is very desirable. So you get your foot out of the way, your leg is out of the way, your foot is in front. And it's very important that you conform to the follow's body. So if you're gonna wrap around her leg, do it in a way that you don't step on her toes. Don't drag your heel over her toenails because she probably spent a good time in doing a pedicure, uh, putting cream on her feet, beautiful shoes, and you could come and ruin that. You don't wanna be in the middle of that. You want to be comfortable and make the follow feel great about herself when she's doing this movement. Give a, li a little bit low stance here so the follow can bring her knee over and reach to pass. As she is looking to bring her knee forward, she knows that once her knee went in, then the foot can follow. Mm -hmm. Shall we do this again? Yeah. Side step. I go to the cross, rotate my partner, step back and turn her, and right here I stay and support her. Bring her in front of you as you turn, and then here. We'll do it again from this point of view. and go to the side. Mm -hmm. I have something to say that for me is very important to share with the follows out, out there. Um, the moment that we uh, cross, like we do the pasadas, which is the second part when I step over that foot, I wanted to show that with you actually because it's more... <laughs> it's more yes, what do I do? We do the step. I will show something at that moment only. So. So I come here where he's sending me. Now, when I go to the pasada and I project that leg, remember about the projection. This is very important for me to share with you because very often time I see follow shots stepping over with the knee bent, okay? But after this, this is the point. If you project that leg in front of you, there's a moment of transferring your weight where your partner is turning you. And I, you see this moment? I kind of create this counter body here. I give time to my leg to follow that counter body to move out of that step, 
okay? And I'm saying this so you don't anticipate to read the resolution or you don't anticipate to anything, actually, because sometimes it is anticipation. As soon as we feel that our, our shoulders are somewhere, we rush to have the legs under uh, the hips aligned with the shoulders and we are kind of keening the, the dancing part where we are dancing, you know, which is in that transition from one, one a point to the other point. So when we create this counter barrier, I just want to show you, yeah, for the, from this position it's good, I think. Here, for example, this is the first counter body, which actually allows me to, you see this extension? I'm not rushing because I feel he's turning me to be right there. Um, Perfect leg. Closing my legs, you know? I actually kind of extend the side of my body before I release that leg um, and I go around, okay? So I really go to a full extension of my back leg, my knee. I roll off my foot, so I roll off. You see that? I do this. Like I'm kind of glued to the floor. I'm not with the top, the tip of my toenails on the floor. I don't leave the floor. And this applies for every single step I do. So it's not only for this particular step, okay? Um, so you lengthen your body. Correct. You feel the rib cage. Yes. And then your disc and your vertebrae is rotating as you anchor the bottom of your bar of the body against the floor. Correct. So as, as he said, I lengthen. I lengthen yes. this area and, and then I can release that energy. And the same here. Once I pass on top of that leg and I project one more time the knee, I project that knee. I transfer my weight, and this creates automatically a counter body. See that? If I really wait for that foot to be extended in the back, it's this. creating a counter body. Now, if I step, and of a sudden I change my weight, and I already pick in this foot, I'm not really taking advantage of that um, till the end, you know? It's like I'm just shortcutting my movements instead of really dancing all the way. Yes. Right? This is three-dimensional tango. It's not just forward and sides. It's not where you put your feet on the floor. It's also what happens above the surface of the floor and how you articulate your body uh, to create dynamisms and shapes and forms that keep you balanced and bring out the beauty of your interpretation and your, and your mm -hmm. anatomy, the way you move. This is what dancing is. Yes, exactly. Now, and this has knee. nothing to do with the speed that you're doing things. The technique doesn't matter if it's slow, where you are, you are working in a slow uh, beat. Uh, if, you, for example, you are dancing a bizarre uh, or, I don't know, interpreting Ooh, a pugliese or whatever, like it's yes. slow, yes. sometimes very slow. Or if you're dancing a darienzo or in your other uh, orchestra that is faster, you know, in general, that you beat, it doesn't matter the speed. The technique is always the same. It's always the same, and I don't, you don't skip this part of the technique. It's not because it's faster, I just jump from one leg to the other. If it's faster, I just rush that action of pushing myself to that leg and transferring my way. But I always try to get to those um, corners, right? Well, I agree with you. Very important that the lead proposes a dance from a flexion so we, both dancers can extend the legs. Mm -hmm. If we dance with the legs too straight and we push off, we might be forgetting about it. So one important part is that. And the other one, what's that? You, you want to play some music? Yeah, actually, it's a good time, right? To okay, dance. yes, let's dance. Yeah, that's okay, that's excellent. Time. But how about we tell our friends how to help our work here and support our channel? But they know. They can always support us by donating to Venmo or PayPal, or you can also subscribe and you can like and you can comment and all of those things help to grow our channel. So, Venmo, PayPal, and you can go to the description. You have a direct link to those places. That's great. So, DJ, how about we start with, um, what should we do? Maybe Tres Esquinas? Dale. Tres Esquinas. Tres Esquinas. All right. Dale, DJ. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.
soy del barrio de tres esquinas, viejo baluarte de un arrabal, donde florecen como glicinas las lindas pibas de delantal, donde en la noche tibi serena su antiguaroma vuelca al malvón y bajo el cielo de luna llena duermen las chatas del corralón. Soy de ese barrio de humilde rango, yo soy el tan sentimental. Soy de ese barrio que toma mates bajo la sombra que da el parral. En sus ochadas compadrín de mozo, tire la daga por un loco amor. Queme en los ojos de una maleva la ardiente se va de mi pasión. Donde en la noche tibi serena su antiguo aroma vuelca el malvón y bajo el cielo de luna llena duermen las chatas del corazón. Good job, DJ. I love that. Good timing, great song. Yes, keep it up. What's up? Oh, yeah, the next one, yes. Got the next one lined up already. That's nice. Okay, surprise nice. us. You see, our channel is growing. The crew is getting better. The future is bright. Okay. Okay, what happened here? Well, we got carried away and we started combining things. You see, you realize? Yes. That's the richness of tango. So as we get here... I had to show the others, but that's, that's what back, you did, right? My step yeah. back here is in relationship to my partner. Mm -hmm. I don't want to step back too far, otherwise I might be too far. So I, I don't want to be in a split position here. I want to be on a, by standing on 100% on one leg. Mm -hmm. The other one is reaching into the parada. Mm -hmm. What's the idea? Parar means to stop. Pasar, you said it earlier, means to pass over, to step over. So, the moment in which the, the lead proposes a pause is one of the freedoms that tango has. We are not confined to a steady rhythm or to a continuous timing. We can pause and extend, so you can warp time in a way in tango. You can do the same movement slow, always following multiple of the beats, whether you step once, or every two beats, or every four beats, or every eight beats. But normally we, we don't just step whatever you want, right? Somewhere where you feel a good accent. So this is a good moment to, when you feel like the phrasing is coming to an end, you could cut it with this. Because at that moment the follow is in one leg, standing with the other one free, and when we have a free leg is when we can decorate and we can stylize our dance. So it is an opportunity for that. Not only that, you're actually bringing the follow right here in front of you and you have a very close embrace to her. Uh, so it's a moment where you can acknowledge each other. It's a moment to make eye contact. It's a very intimate moment and a very gentle moment as well. So the, w here, gradually, you bring her forward here and that foot could become the target of your second uh, parada. That means as you bring her into this axis, you put your weight on your right foot, guys, and then you turn your left foot in front of her, and then you are waiting here for the next parada and the next pasada. So what is important here? It's very important that you pull your right elbow back when you do this. You see, you want to be in a cross-body position with your torso 
her. Kind of like those Egyptians paintings that we see in the documentaries. They are like two-dimensional. So you want to get round up like this. Then, as the follow steps towards your left, you want to transfer your weight and then make a loop with this foot and look for the other foot on the other side. And when you're on this side, look at this arm here. I'm trying to cross that all the way. I need to get, not only this makes me look like I have a nicer waist, <laughs> oh, but yeah. also... You look beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, mi amor. <laughs> so, yeah, the other day I was standing here at the corner around the coffee shop, I was standing like that, and then two women came by and they looked at me and said, what a waist. And I was like, <laughs> why they say that to me? And so uh, maybe it's because of my, uh, yeah, I lost some weight, you know. Anyway, it was weird. They weren't smiling when they said, but they've been complimenting my waist a lot this week. So it's because of the disassociation. I've been exercising my disassociation. Anyway, okay. so, boleo, no boleo, pasada, you pass over here. And see how I transfer my weight towards the right foot and then pull my arm out of the way here so my partner has the space. Very important. Something that I see so often is that some guys forget that the follow needs space and you, we make him do all the, uh, the work and we don't give space. So here, as I pull my left hand back, I allow her to turn freely. Because if this arm was here, I will not be free anymore. So you I won't. I cannot actually walk, exit the way you want me to exit. You will kind of block my uh, movement. It's like so. a lever that as I turn, she turns. Yes. And this, you know, this is for the follows. You can add this leg going around in a circular motion. So I was from here, this leg in the back, see? It goes all the way around. So you can do either way. No collection. When you sweep in your lapis, there's no collection needed. Yes. But I said, you, it's not like it's the only way to do it. You might want to do it just there. It's not wrong to do this. <laughs> now, when you pass the, the, the leg, you need to have clearance to step over. So you need to lift the knee in front of you. See the, my knee where it is? My knee is in front of the other leg. I'm crossing that knee. I'm not lifting my knee here. I'm crossing it, okay? I have clearance, and when I ha once I have clearance, meaning that my foot can get through, you know, I can choose different things. Right now, I'm just choosing to go close to his foot and slide, okay? And I will do this side again. I go knees together and ankles together. My ankles here are together. Can you remove that foot a little bit? You see my position there? Ankles and knees. They are together. Yeah. So, I don't want to really be coming like this. I really want to have this position, okay? Once I go in this position, I go up. My knee is aligned in front of this leg. As I say, it's not open. It's in a closed position. And when I pass that, I can go lowering myself and projecting before I transfer my weight. So knees, ankles together, lift the knee in front of the other knee, pass to the other side, project the leg, transfer. This is one way. The other, other way, common way, I sh usually do it as well. Sometimes I just extend that leg to step, okay? You don't need to do that, but it's another option. So from this position, you lift and you extend and you step. If you feel like That's more like a ballerina kind of... Um, I wonder where you got that from. <laughs> because I used to be a ballet dancer, so, you know, it's a, it's a moment you can apply that. <laughs> mm -hmm. You take your permission. Exactly. Very so. nice. Mm -hmm. Would you like to dance again? Yes, I would like to do that. <laughs> hey, Mr. DJ.
been all for today guys right? yes this is it yes mm. wow beautiful dancing yes <laughs> <laughs> okay guys thank you for being there in the other side of the screen as always we are looking forward to see you again next week take care <laughs>